I've been using one of my Raspberry Pis in my case with a wraparound acrylic panel for the past few months. One of the things that's been missing is an SSD. I don't mind using a micro SD card for tinkering with the Pi and for switching between operating systems, but when I start using it a bit more regularly with the same OS, then I prefer to use a faster and more reliable storage medium. I used an M SATA drive in my last case, and that's been doing well, but this time I thought I'd try an M.2 solution. The shield I'm going to be using is an M.2 NGFF shield from Geekworm that supports an M.2 B key SATA SSD with a 22 by 80 form factor. I chose this board because it seems like one of the most widely available SSD shields and is reasonably priced, selling for around $30 depending on where you buy it from. A number of people in the comments on my last SSD build asked why I didn't use a faster NVMe drive. That's because there really won't be any speed benefit. The bottleneck in adding an SSD to a Raspberry Pi is with the Pi's USB 3.0 ports, which only supports a maximum speed of around 600 megabytes per second. This aligns pretty well with what you can expect from a SATA or MSATA SSD, but is way under an NVMe drive speed, which can typically be over 3000 megabytes per second. While the price of NVMe drives has been steadily decreasing, until they're the same price or cheaper than SATA SSDs, there isn't really any point in using them on a Pi. I'm using a 240 gig SSD, which is way more than I really need for my Pi, but was a few dollars more than the 120 gig one. To cool my Pi, I'm going to be using an ice tower. I used an ice cube cooler on my previous build, and I actually prefer this cooler as it provides cooling to the USB and Ethernet controller chips as well. I also feel like it's better quality. I only have one of them at the moment though, and it's still installed in my previous case, so I'm going to be using the ice tower for this build. So to fit the SSD into the case, I raised the Raspberry Pi's port cutouts and moved the ventilation cutouts higher as well. I also made some changes to the standoff positions, enlarged the center USB port cutout for the jumper, and moved the fan up a little to clear the Pi. There still seems to be enough headroom for the ice tower, so let's get it printed and see if it fits. While the case is printing, we can make up the acrylic side panel. This is just laser cut from a piece of 2mm clear acrylic. To bend the acrylic panel, I'm again going to use an acrylic bending tool. This heats up a line between the two notches I've cut out on the side panel. Once the acrylic has been heated, we can then use the side profile of the case to bend it. Next I'm going to install the Pi and SSD. Let's start by installing our SSD onto our SSD shield. This just plugs into the socket and is then held in place with a single small screw supplied with the shield. Next I'm going to secure some 6mm brass standoffs onto the bottom of the case using some M2.5 screws that come with the ice tower. If you try this build out for your Raspberry Pi, make sure that you use a set of 6mm standoffs for these. The ones included with the SSD shield are longer, and these will cause your Pi's ports to not be aligned with the cutouts in the case. We can then put the SSD shield into place on the standoffs and hold it in position using the longer brass standoffs that came with the SSD shield. Then we can hold the Raspberry Pi in place using the standoffs that come with the ice tower or ice cube kit. It looks like our ports are all positioned correctly within the cutouts, so let's get our ice tower cooler installed. I've already installed the legs on the bottom of my cooler, so now I'm going to remove the fan from the cooler to mount onto the side panel rather.
To hold the fan onto the side panel, we need to press some M3 nuts into the pockets on the front of the fan. This is easiest to do by laying the nuts down on a flat surface and then pressing the fan down over them. We can then hold the fan in place using some M3 screws through the acrylic side panel. I'm just using the screws that were holding the fan in place on the ice tower. Now let's plug the fan into 5 volts and ground. If you're using a PWM fan like this one, then you can either leave the PWM pin disconnected or plug it into a GPIO pin to control the fan. I'm going to plug it into GPIO pin 14, which is the one next to the ground pin. This way I can turn it on only when I need it. I don't like using these fans with a PWM speed control script because they're actually more noisy when they're slowed down. For a silent fan you're better off using a good quality Noctua fan. The top cover is held in place with some M3 by 8mm screws, but hold off on doing this just yet if you haven't prepared your SSD. To finish it off we just need to plug in our USB jumper and then put the 3D printed cover onto it. Before closing it up, if you haven't already flashed your operating system image onto your SSD, there are two easy ways to do this. One is to use a USB A to A cable and plug the shield into your computer. Then use Raspberry Pi Imager to flash the operating system image directly onto the SSD. The second, if you already have your Pi running on a microSD card, is to boot it up with the microSD card plugged in, then use the SD card copier utility to copy the microSD card to your SSD. Then remove the micro SD card and reboot your part. If you need help with this, I've got a separate guide on booting your Raspberry Pi up from an SSD, which I'll link in the video description. Now that we copied the micro SD card, let's boot it up and see how our SSD performs. I'm just going to run the built in micro SD card speed test. This will test the speed of the SSD if the Pi is booted up from it. If we open up the results, we get a sequential write speed of just under 200 megabytes per second, which is a substantial increase over the 10 megabytes per second required as a pass for the test. We also get a random write speed of 9199 IOPS. IOPS stands for input or output operations per second, which is also way over the target of 500 and a random write speed of 10,632 IOPS. So those are really good results and they're much better than what you'd get from even a good quality micro SD card. Our Raspberry Pi now boots up faster and will be a lot more reliable going forward. Let me know what you think of this modification to my case in the comment section below and is there anything else you'd like to see me do with the case design? Thanks for watching, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.